All right, in this video, we're going to add the add run functionality. Okay, so we're gonna to go to our script file. And when we've been using jQuery in the past few projects, we would say when the document is ready. Okay, and then we put a function in here. With jQuery mobile, we're gonna use something, it's gonna be a little different uh, basically, we want to use the page init instead of ready. Okay, so, uh, but we only want to run this once because if we run this and we don't specify one, then every page we have in our index file, because we're using multiple page template, um, it'll run. So it'll run more than once. So what we want to do is say document dot one, and then inside here, uh, we want to put page init. So when the page is initialized, uh, we want to run a function. Okay, and then all of our code is going to go in here. Now we're going to pretty much put everything into functions for this project. So we're going to add a bunch. We'll have a bunch of handlers that'll call a function that we'll define below. All right. So we're going to do the add handler first. So this is going to look like this. We want the submit add. I think it's an ID. Let me just check um, for the add page down here. Uh, button with the ID of submit add. OK, so we want to grab that. So submit add and then we're going to say dot on. Now instead of click, we're going to use the tap event. Okay, and which is a jQuery mobile event. And if you're using the app in a browser on a desktop or a laptop, tap is gonna work just like click, okay? When you're on a uh, mobile device, an iPad or a smartphone, then it's gonna be a tap. So what we're gonna do is when someone taps the submit add button, we're gonna run a function called add run, okay? What we've been doing is actually having a self calling function here, but now we're just going to create a function called add run. All right, and I like to just comment my functions. Oh. Okay, so add a run. Actually, we only need one of these. All right, so we'll say function add run. Okay, so let's just make sure that this works first of all. So we'll say alert one. Okay, we'll go back, reload. If we click submit, we get an alert with one. Okay, that's good. Now, as I said before, we're gonna be using the HTML5 local storage API to store our runs and Natively, uh, local storage key value pairs, uh, the, the value has to be a string, okay? You can't store um, objects or arrays or anything like that um, natively. But what we can do is we can create an object for each run. Each run will be an object. And then we can turn it into a string and then insert it into local storage as a single value. Okay, we'll have a it'll be a big string and then when we want to use it we'll parse it back to JSON back to uh, an object and then we can use it we can loop through it and do things like that all right and I'll, I'll explain this as we go on uh, but what we want to do first is get the values so we want to get form values and put them into variables okay so uh, every run will have a miles and a date Okay, that's all that we're going to have for a run. Okay, so variable miles is going to be equal to uh, add miles dot val. Okay, so add miles is the the ID of the form, the input for miles. Okay, same thing with date. We're going to say variable date equals uh, ID add date. Dot val. Okay, so that'll give us that. 
Now what we want to do is create the object. Okay, so we're going to create, um, I guess, the run object. Okay, so we'll have a variable called run, which will equal an object, which we need to put in curly braces. So we'll have a date. So this is the key. The value is going to be date. It's going to be the date variable. All right, miles is going to be set to miles, but we need this to be a float. All right, natively it's going to be just a string, but we want to have maybe, you know, 1.2, 1.3. We want floats, decimals. So we need to parse float. Okay, so we need to use that function called parse float. All right, so that'll give us our run object. All right, so the next thing we need to do is get the current runs, um, the current runs object from local storage. And what I'm going to do is put that, I'm going to create a single function um, just to do that. So inside the add run function, we're going to create a variable called runs, not rubs, runs, and set that to get uh, runs object. All right, so let's create that right below here. Get the runs object. Whoops, what am I doing? Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so get runs object. So what we want to do, as I said, we want to dip into local storage, get the object string, and then we want to change it. We want to stringify it, and we can use the stringify function to do that. All right, so the first thing we're going to do here um, for our get runs object is create um, an empty array. Okay, so we want to set runs array, and we're going to set variable runs is going to be equal to new array. Okay, next we want to um, get the current runs from local storage. And remember, this is going to be this is going to come back as a string. Uh, so we want variable, oops, variable um, current runs. And that's going to be set to local storage dot get item runs. Okay, so this is the syntax for getting a uh, variable or a value or item from local storage. All right, so that's going to put that inside of current runs. Next thing. We need to check and see if there's anything in the current runs because right now there's not. We haven't put anything in our local storage yet, so this will apply to us the first time we run this. All right, so check local storage. Okay, so we're going to say if current runs. Uh, is not equal to null. Okay, so if there is something in current runs, then we want to set it to runs. So runs equals, and this is where we're going to parse parse it uh, into JSON. Okay, so we're going to use JSON dot parse, and then pass in current runs. Okay, and then we'll have an object to work with. Finally, we want to return this. Okay, so we want to uh, return runs object. Oh. All right, so I also want to sort this. I want the newest runs to be on the top. Okay, so we're going to run sort as well. 
All right, now if you want to sort, this is a JavaScript um, method. We need to actually run a function inside of here. And we need to pass in A, B, and then in here we want to return new date and B dot date. new date so what we're doing here is we're um, sorting it by date okay we want it from the most recent to um, the furthest away okay and this is how we do it now uh, if we were sorting it by title or miles or whatever we wouldn't need to um, create a new date object here and here but since we want it to be by date, we need to do it this way. Okay, so that'll return the sorted object. Okay, and that's going to get put right here inside of our add run function. So now, once we get that, we want to add our new values to the runs object. Okay, and to do that, we just use the push method. Okay, so let's say add run to runs array okay so we can say runs dot push run okay and then what I want to do is just alert just let the user know that the run's been added all right and then what we need to do after it's added to the object is we need to put that object back into local storage and we can't put it in as an object remember local storage values have to be strings so we need to do something called stringify it all right so let's say set stringified object to local storage okay we can do that with local storage dot set item okay so set items we're gonna have a key and a value the key is gonna be runs and then the value we can't just say runs because runs is an object so we need to run we need to surround it with JSON dot stringify put that there all right after we do that, after we add the new run, what do we want to do? We'll, we'll just um, we'll redirect to the index page. Okay, so we'll say window dot location dot href. Go back to index. All right, and then we just want to return false. Make sure that the form doesn't actually submit. And that should do it for us. So let's go ahead and save that and give it a shot. Probably have to do a little bit of debugging. I'm gonna make this a little bigger so I can so we can see the console. Okay, let's see. We'll reload and say add run. Okay, we're already getting an unexpected token on line 16, which is right here. All right, we're, we're creating an object here. We shouldn't have a semicolon there. All right, so let's say we ran 2.2 miles yesterday. Submit. Run added. All right, so to check and see if it added to local storage, um, we don't have the functionality to display it here yet. We haven't done that. So what you can do is in Chrome tools, or whatever browser you're using, you want to um, you want to go to where is it? Resources, all right, um, and then click on local storage file. Okay, so here is the runs. All right, so this here it has the date and the miles. All right, so that worked perfectly. Now this is actually a string okay we, we're storing the object as a string in local storage 
Now this current date and current miles, don't worry about that. That's from uh, the finished app. That didn't come from us, okay? So we can actually clear this. We can clear all these. And let's just try to add it again just to make sure everything's good. Uh, so we'll reload. You can see we have nothing in local storage. We'll go ahead and add, we'll say, five miles um, on the 8th. Submit. Okay, and there you can see we have our string. All right, our object string. If we go ahead and add another one, let's add, we'll say, four miles yesterday, submit. And now you can see that we have another object, okay? So that's really it for adding runs. In the next chapter, uh, I'm sorry, the next section or video, uh, we're gonna make it so that we can get these, this string here, turn it to an object, and loop through it and display them on the screen on the home page.